welcome to blockchain fundamentals course by mind magics i'll start by a little bit about myself so i'm working as a blockchain developer and consultant in the it industry right now i am a coda certified developer i've been featured on various blogs written some articles about many blockchain platforms or finding their technical details if you look into the industry right now the top 10 most trending technologies you can hear names artificial intelligence machine learning devops edge computing a very basic question that arises in your mind is why to go for blockchain out of all the possible options a student or a professional should for a into the blockchain void so what blockchain brings to the table is brings a new way obviously we are going to discuss a lot about what's happening and how it actually works but to be very name it in very general sense so blockchain brings together all the other technologies for example ai has been implemented with blockchain in a lot of sectors such as healthcare iot internet of things again has now become blockchain of things so blockchain is acting as a platform for every technology and revolutionizing the way how they operate but again it still students are a little bit keen about learning why they should opt blockchain as a career just to go over some stats there has been 2000 to 6000% job growth in blockchain if there were 1000 developers needed in 2017 by the end of 2018 there were almost 2000 to 6000% more blockchain developers needed in the market so there is a lot of opportunity and there are very less people who actually know how to implement blockchain or how to use it the conventional salary it's between a starting salary of 1.8 lakh 2.4 lakhs and it goes somewhere around 12 lakh 16 lakhs per year but the blockchain salary it's 50 to 100% higher and it goes between 5 lakh to 30 lakh as you can see and one thing that's acting as a barrier to most of us is experience even if we get 10 years of experience we still are unable to get that package that we deserve in blockchain just 3 years of experience can get you a package of as high as 45 lakh so that's the power of blockchain in the industry right now just some other uh, stats so you can see that most opportunities in blockchain are available in the banking sector public sector private sector banks also they are very keen in finding good blockchain developers for various projects will understand how blockchain is helping the banking sector also with many other sectors but for the time being this is just to keep you motivated that blockchain is very much in demand especially in the banking sector so coming to the international opportunities most of us come from very advanced nations or any nation in the world so blockchain is in demand everywhere primarily in switzerland singapore so there is a high demand in blockchain mostly in the financial sector but other countries are also rising in the asian apex sector token economy other blockchain concepts are being constantly on the rise and the different job roles that you can opt for obviously blockchain developer but there are a lot of job roles that you can go for for example you can go for blockchain consultancy which is a very prominent field right now as a consultant your primary role is to differentiate between different blockchain platforms and help the client decide which blockchain platform will benefit the application most a blockchain solution architect is also in a lot of need right now and it's going to grow in the coming years what a blockchain solution architect does he is responsible for completing the end to end structure of the blockchain application including which platform to use which languages to use what to implement and what to integrate with blockchain next is uh, senior software engineers for cryptocurrency and for blockchain development so it's uh, pretty much straightforward cryptocurrency analyst so cryptocurrency is a field of blockchain which deals with cryptocurrencies so analyst for cryptocurrency is just like your traditional share market analyst it's kind of the same thing and then there is research analyst research analyst is also a very prominent blockchain role right now because the blockchain concepts are very nascent right now even blockchain as a technology is nascent it's growing rapidly so you can look into being a research analyst in blockchain also blockchain basically is replacing a lot of industries many times people have heard that blockchain is removing the third party blockchain is this it's that but at a very core level what blockchain is doing is implementing decentralization 
So what happens is if you look at the diagrams in front of you on the screen, so you can see a centralized network, decentralized network, and a distributed network. A centralized network, everyone is dependent on a central authority. So for example, if you go to a bank, all of us deposit some money to the bank. And the bank is the sole owner of our money. So not exactly the owner, but the bank keeps the record of our money. And if the bank tomorrow says that, okay, your account does not have 1 lakh rupees, it has only 10,000 rupees. There is not much we can do because bank has a power. And above all, the main thing is that our data is also saved with the bank. So if the bank is hacked or someone steals our data from the bank, then he's able to get our information and access our data or access our money through the bank's system. So now the need of the R is, why should we depend on a centralized authority in such an advanced society? Earlier, it was not possible to decentralize the system to give power back to the people. But with blockchain, this is now possible. So even before blockchain, decentralized systems were a thing. So for example, a decentralized network you can say, for example, there's a public sector bank in India. We say it's RBI. So RBI is the government bank that's managing all the other bank segments. So RBI decides what other banks can do. It's acting as a centralized authority for other banks. The private sector banks, for example, HDFC, Axis Bank, Yes Bank. What we do is we go to each individual bank and we open an account and deposit money there. Each individual bank has some branches in different cities, different states, and different countries even. So this is called a decentralized network. A bank has no central server, but a decentralized server. For example, the bank has one server in Mumbai, one server in Bengaluru, and one server in Delhi, and so on. So it has multiple servers who are responsible for keeping the record of our data, who are responsible for maintaining the record of our data. So even if one server crashes, we can always depend on the other server. And then there are distributed networks. Taking decentralization a little bit further, distributed networks are where everyone is the owner of their own data. And this is the core concept of blockchain. Earlier, distributed networks were not possible because there was no provision of building trust and transparency between the parties involved on the network. Every node is independent on the network and they are interconnected with each other. You can take an example of a Paytm network without a Paytm central server. So I have a Paytm account, you have a Paytm account. We can send money to each other and there is no central authority governing it. But in distributed network, to remove the need of central authority, it is very difficult. Why? Mainly because what if I send you 10 rupees and tomorrow I say I sent you 20 rupees. You have to give me 20 back. Or on the other hand, if I send you 20 rupees and tomorrow you say, no, you only send me 10 rupees. So there's a lot of chance of fraud. Or in other words, we can say there's no governance model. There's no trust model. This is what blockchain aims to solve. And this is how blockchain is being a mainstream technology right now. Let's again look at what is happening in a centralized system. There is a single point of failure. It is susceptible to fraud. The processing is very slow. Even if you think that you can transfer money from bank, one bank account to another bank account. So you have to firstly deposit the money in the bank account, then process a statement to transfer the money, and then the other person withdraws the money. And in between, the transfer of money takes a lot of time. Sometimes when there is paperwork involved, this process is even more slow. Number four, so there is a control and dominance by the third party. And then obviously there is the security issue. Let's see how blockchain combats each of these individual problems and what exactly it provides. So when we go over the properties of blockchain before defining what blockchain actually is and how it implements in real time. So we can go over the different properties of blockchain. So the first one is the property of being immutable. Immutable generally means that something that is not modifiable. Whatever we write on the blockchain, so blockchain acts as a database where if we make an entry, it is not modifiable. It is there for the life. 
and if we want to change some value in that entry or you know update the value then we have to add a new entry basically you cannot change something that is already on blockchain you can add anything you want but you cannot change it by having this immutability it comes to the property of prominence or auditability so auditability is keeping a record of all the transactions on the blockchain if you look at any blockchain platform or any blockchain application any interaction with the blockchain is called as a transaction because blockchain in essence is like a database whatever we save on the blockchain is considered as a transaction so what it does is if we are maintaining every record if we are keeping everything immutable and unmodifiable and we add new records so it creates a property of auditability naturally for example if 10 years later you want to see what you did at this point of time you will get a perfect source that okay in a span of 10 years these are the multiple transactions that you did on the blockchain platform next property is single source of truth so obviously combining the two properties immutable and auditability maintaining a complete data record and keeping it totally original without any scope of modifications it becomes a single source of truth moreover if you go into a distributed network blockchain acts as a shared ledger so you keep all the record on blockchain and this blockchain is shared among everyone on the platform and it acts as a single source of truth if i send you 10 rupees everyone on the platform knows that this person sent 10 rupees to this person then even if after two days or three days i say that no i didn't send 10 rupees i sent 20 rupees we can confirm from the record on any other user so in this way it acts as a single source of truth the fourth property is security in blockchain generally there is the involvement of hashing and encryption so very advanced level of hashing and encryption are being used in blockchain which ensure that the platform is completely secure the information that we store on the blockchain platform is totally encrypted no one can access our private information creates a sense of security on the network which is very important and which is something that is missing from the centralized system even if you see that banks have employed such a important or advanced infrastructure which provides the utmost level of encryption and security and firewalls even then they are susceptible to hacks but a blockchain network virtually impossible to hack the next property of blockchain and one of the most important properties is smart contracts so smart contracts will obviously look into it in details in the further slides but basically smart contracts are the pieces of code that implement a business logic just get the basic definition smart contracts are piece of code which implements a business logic on the blockchain so smart contracts are what making blockchain adoption possible you can implement blockchain in virtually any segment any vertical if you know how to create smart contracts and the sixth part the property of blockchain is that it is this distributed not decentralized so let's let's understand this so if we see in the diagram again a decentralized network again has some authority some dependency on different nodes but a distributed network it is completely independent everyone is the owner of his own own information and privacy so blockchain is essentially a distributed network not a decentralized network so coming to the origin of blockchain just up some theory before we get into how blockchain actually works so in reality blockchain is a concept that can be traced back to the early 90s it's not something that has been released just now it is something that was originally conceived in early 90s at that time there was a research paper how to time stamp a digital document so there were two scientists dr scott stonetta and stuart heber so they developed a research paper in which they introduced a the concept of immutable records what they proposed was 
in a client server network we as a client can send a document to the server and that document can hold a timestamp so just as an entry in the register in a traditional way where we write the time so for example if you do a transaction at 7th of may and you write in the register 7th may at 6:45 pm so in the same way you can put a timestamp on a digital document on the computer and send it to the server so the document sits on the server indefinitely and you can access the document at any point of the time and you can refer okay this document was created at this point of time and this is the timestamp in this way an immutable record was maintained on the server and it gave kind of a preface to how blockchain can be implemented before again we get into blockchain i would like to address the misconception if i ask you what is internet will you say that internet is gmail or internet is this presentation going out right now the ability to share the screen or the ability to talk on the talk digitally it's internet no internet on its own is a very big umbrella under which various various things are included such as email chats social media blogs and a lot of other things similarly blockchain is a very large concept and bitcoin is just a small part of it so bitcoin is not blockchain just as email is not the internet okay bitcoin is just a cryptocurrency blockchain was launched with bitcoin which is why there is this misconception in the industry right now i am sure you guys also must have heard bitcoin with blockchain at some point of time in your life most of us have but bitcoin is not a characteristic or not a definition for blockchain so what blockchain is it's a collection of different terms if you see the terms before you cryptography consensus chronological order you will see that there is no new term all these terms are pretty general they are a part of the it world but blockchain brings all these terms together and it, this is how it becomes so revolutionary so firstly let's understand these general terms so what is a ledger it's a uh, record of transactions so multiple entries then there is cryptography so cryptography is the art of encryption and decryption you know hiding your sensitive data and being able to access that data through your own keys it's a key lock type system public key and private key then there are nodes so nodes are nothing but just the participants on the network so they are machines that are involved in the network then there is consensus we are going to look into consensus also in the future slides but for the time being consensus is a way of coming to a mutual decision among the different participants on the network and the last is chronological order so chronological order is a order in of time so for example order of events if an event occurred at 7 pm another event occurred at 7 5 another event occurred at 7 10 so they are logged into a ledger at 7 5 event a 7 10 event b 7 15 event c so this is a chronological order a timely manner bringing all of this together will essentially create blockchain but just bringing all of this together is not the only way another concept that is involved is that blockchain is a peer to peer technology so if you go to any blogs on the internet any resource on blockchain you will hear words like peer to peer distributed ledger cryptographically linked these concepts make blockchain look like it's very difficult to understand but actually if you look at individual terms it's rather very straight forward so in front of you you can see an image there is a traditional system and there is a blockchain system in a traditional system everyone comes to a central authority and stores their information to the central authority in a blockchain system everyone stores their own information in their own systems and that information is shared among the network without other people being able to see it let's look at how blockchain actually works so blockchain is exactly what it's called block chain a chain of blocks so a block is a representation of data a data is stored inside a block as a hash not exactly the data sometimes the hash of the data is also stored inside the block this block 
is connected to another block through the hash. So for example, if I come to a blockchain platform and the platform is storing age of different people, I say my age is 25. The blockchain stores my age, hashes it, and gives me a key with which I can view my age. Then you come to the blockchain platform, you say your age is 23. Another block is created. Now your block contains the hash of my block and then creates a hash of the complete thing. So hash of my age plus your age equals to the hash of the new block. In this way, we connect different blocks. So you can see there is a Genesis block, which is the first block, the first interaction with the blockchain. It creates a hash. This is included as a previous hash in the next block and a new hash is generated. And this is included in the previous hash of next block and so on and so forth. In this way, a long chain of blocks is created, which is cryptographically linked. How cryptographically linked? Because each block is being encrypted. Each block is being hashed and its key is a part of the other block. So you can say that it is cryptographically linked. Essentially, if you look into this diagram, if you change anything in the block one, the hash of block one will be changed, which will change the hash of block two, which will change the hash of block three. Changing just one hash takes a lot of time. And in a blockchain where there are thousands or millions of blocks in front of one block, it's impossible to change one block because to change the data in one block, you have to change data in every block or you have to change the hash of every block that is followed by that block. And it is virtually impossible right now. So Genesis block, you add, create hash, and then add the new blocks in a chronological order. But the adding of a block is not a straightforward process. If it was straightforward, anyone could just come to blockchain and add so what if I add something, you add something, someone else adds something simultaneously. How to decide which block to add and when to add and how to add the block. So this is done through the protocol called consensus. So we'll, we'll define consensus in the following slides. But basically consensus is responsible for the mutual agreement between all the parties on the network that this thing is authenticated and it can now be added on the blockchain. So in the whole process, we can say that the main part of blockchain is encryption and hashing. So what's the basic difference between encryption and hashing? If you look at this diagram, you can see that the most important part is a hash. But again, if you change the hash, you can access the data. Even if it's impossible, still you want some surety that your data is safe. This is where encryption comes. So essentially, if I put my age 23 in the block or 25 in this block one, I encrypt my age as a data, as an encryption technique, and then put it in the block. So in this way, blockchain becomes even more robust by combining encryption with hashing, where encryption works as converting the plain text into encrypted text, which can be later converted into plain text. And hashing algorithm works as plain text, which can be converted into a hash function. Uh, one key difference here is a hash function is never retraceable. You cannot convert hash function back to the plain text, but you can convert the encrypted text back to the plain text. So summarizing this in one slide, let's say there's a blockchain platform where Alice wants to send money to Bob. Alice wants to send money to Bob. So Alice has a customer ID, Bob has a customer ID, there is an amount of money, there is time. So there are a lot of constraints. These constraints form a transaction which is represented as a block. This block is broadcasted to all the network for a consensus protocol. So this block goes to every participant to get verified or authenticated. Then Every participant approves the transaction. This block is valid. Every participant says, okay, we are okay with this block. And then this block gets added to the existing blockchain. This way, the transaction is complete. 
and even this large process the amount of time hefty process it takes just a few milliseconds or seconds depending on the network it's very fast in nature why because there is no central authority there is something called as the blockchain trilemma i'll i'll explain that to you once you are familiar with more blockchain concepts and we can come back to this slide so let's define consensus protocol first so consensus protocol what it says is there are 100 participants on the network two participants want to do a transaction and to enable trust between the two participants as well as l not having a third party on the network again maintain the trust between two participants and not have a third party so maintain trust without a third party we can reach a mutual agreement over all the participants so for example in this image that you can see six people are on the network all the six people agree that something is true or something is validated and as soon as they agree the thing gets verified on the network so this makes it a unanimous kind of thing a fault tolerance network and an efficient and fair and reliable network because there are 100 participants there is a very less chance almost zero to none chance that all the 100 participants will conspire against one participant because no one personally knows each other a bank knows you so for example in a bank there is an offer on loan you want a loan there is an offer but the bank manager you spoke to him very roughly last year he didn't give you the offer you get a loan for 8% while the offer would have got you 7.5% it becomes an unfair network on a blockchain consensus if this application was on blockchain everyone could see there is an offer you can get 7.5% and you are not interacting with any central authority everyone is the owner of their own data so there is no chance of being unfair so you get the best deal and this is just a basic example consensus has a lot of applications it's basically the heart of blockchain so to say in some cases the consensus algorithm decides the blockchain development so for example i know of this blockchain platform in america that's emerging it's called algorand so there's a professor in mit silvio micali he created a consensus algorithm and on the basis of that consensus al algorithm he created a whole blockchain system algorand similarly there was a new blockchain consensus algorithm which is why eos blockchain became prominent and coda blockchain hyperledger and there is cosmos polkadot there are a lot of blockchain platforms which are built on different consensus algorithms we'll discuss them later the popular types of consensus algorithms that are in the market right now so number 1 there is a proof of work consensus algorithm in proof of work what happens is you have to on a network so there are validating nodes and non validating nodes validating nodes are the people who have the power to say that this transaction is authentic so what they do is they solve a particular problem by using high computational power essentially what proof of work means is like if you invest too much time money and effort in solving a problem you are probably a genuine person for example your car broke down on the way and there's a tire puncture so you want to go from point a to point b so what you do is you remove the tire you unscrew the stepney then you screw the stepney again so you are putting in a lot of effort and time into making sure that the card is correct and the card can move forward and take you forward why because you also want to go somewhere so proof of work essentially means that if you are putting in the right amount of efforts and right amount of time into the network into the you know into, into the computational power then you are a authentic person this process is called mining on the blockchain network so in a proof of work consensus there is a complex mathematical puzzle this puzzle is solved by different people who are called miners the first person to solve this puzzle and send the solution to the network gets rewards and the whole process is called as mining when we say we solve the puzzle so you can 
imagine the puzzle as solving an equation y equal to fx the answer of the equation is pretty straightforward the answer of problem statement it is straightforward you can confirm that answer anytime but the process of getting that answer the process of mining that answer solving that statement it is what requires a lot of efforts and the person who solves the problem the first time he gets a reward there are a lot of other concepts involved in mining also so it's a very complicated process but we don't need to get into the process of consensus how it works on the back end but just how consensus in, is involved in the blockchain the second one is proof of stake and the third one is practical byzantine fault tolerance 